The title of a piece of artwork is its window. It is the word or phrase we use to understand and identify what we're talking about in relation to the artwork. The words themselves can be generic or specific, loaded with nuance or completely surface level and obvious. A subtitle could provide a specific idea, a flavor, or viewpoint of that work, focusing on what element or even what theme is going to be present. Similar to a theme, which by my definition is what a story is about, a major theme is thus what a story is mostly about. The window is simply a frame we put around the work to encapsulate it. Star Wars doesn't really tell us about the theme of conflict between two warring armies in space, nor is it a documentary of galactic proportions of such armies. It's really just a classic hero's journey with a futuristic setting. Thus, windowing gives us a word or phrase we use to encapsulate the body of the work. That's called the title. Now, titles can use themes, ideas, philosophies, that's all fine. But if you are going to be that descriptive, it has to be accurate. It has to match the body. This is where the first problem of the game, Torment Tides of Numenera, pops in. If titles are a window, then this is a poor, if not false one. If we look at the first part, the main title, Torment, you expect this to be a story about people in Torment, or at least the protagonist, or maybe a place called Torment. In all accounts, you would be wrong. There is no place, no major theme, and no real feeling of torment. The main character you control is not in torment, he does not and cannot torment anyone. He heals extremely fast, and is essentially a newborn character, hence being the last cast-off of the Changing God. The Changing God is not in torment, the other cast-offs are not in torment, everyone else does not seem to be in torment. Only near the end are we told that all other non-cast-offs, in some sort of subconscious metaphysical way, are in pain, as a result of the changing gods and the various cast-offs' actions. Trying to show torment is hard. Even Planescape Torment had this problem. How do we know the Nameless One was in torment? We're told of frightening visions, of a scarred body, of a long story of redemption, of metaphysical dreams of suffering, of being haunted by literal and past ghosts, of a variety of nightmares, of things you can't quite understand because of your forgotten memories, of various choices you can make to say you are, and finally, various characters saying you and they are in torment. Telling is not the best method, but that's what the story was saying over and over again. In Torment, Tides of Numenera, I can't identify one specific scene or moment where we or the antagonist is identified as being in torment. Some characters just want to be left alone or go into hiding, but nothing that's really tormenting them. The people in cities, as weird and strange as they are, seem to be getting by just fine. We've no skeletons in our closet, no ghost is haunting us. Even the sorrow that's literally hunting us isn't really tormenting us. We don't even understand what it is or what we are. So no, there's no sense of what emotion to ascribe to that. It's just a, a mysterious deadly phenomenon which most of the world of Numenera is anyway. The only major conflict which has occurred in the distant past, which then I can see as a result of the change in God and the first cast off disagreeing, uh, which is called the the creation of the endless battle that has lasted for centuries could cause lasting repercussions, but not the feeling of torment. The subtitle, Tides of Numenera, is even more confusing. There are no tides of Numenera. These are two separate ideas. The tides are a metaphysical karma system based on people's actions that have nothing to do with Numenera or the Numenera. Numenera is a loaded word which refers to Monte Cook's RPG universe set in the Ninth World. It can also refer to the technological artifacts from the Ninth World, all of which have nothing to do with the Tides. So what are the Tides? Well, they're a metaphysical karmic system. How it came about we don't know, but we have to imagine it's from the wonders of the Ninth World. It's like the Force in Star Wars, kind of. It's a form of energy, but way more complicated, and very few can even know of its existence or can manipulate it. The Tides cause the cast-offs to be somewhat immortal, causing their bodies to heal amazingly. Some can manipulate it to be used as a weapon, travel between the dimensions, and other such strange magical things. In the game, our affinity to the tides shift based on our choices. The same way the force has light and dark side, the tides have five main colors to them. Your choices represents what two major tides you bend toward, and thus your ranking in that tide goes up. However, I didn't see any major results of one's choices after having a certain predominant tide. What this means is, the tides do nothing in the game. People react to your choices, and so will the tides. This invisible force that only you can perceive. 
If you do something nice for someone, you're more gold. You ask more questions to learn about something, you're more blue. Be aggressive or emotional, you're more red, and so on. If this was supposed to be some sort of reputation or ethic system, well, it's not there. It's the only impact that they have on the story is maybe an extra scene or slide at the end of the game. This is what Colin or the creators refer to as the legacy or potential multiple endings. The tides do have a connection to one's nemesis or the sorrow, who is trying to stop you, the changing god and the other cast-offs, but that's only revealed at the very end, and is certainly not a window to the body of the work. It is not a major theme, and is ultimately superfluous to the story. You do get a backdrop energy effect from your character portrait in your character sheet, as do the other characters, but it's totally cosmetic. This is rather egregious, that you can remove all talk and mysticism and ethics of the tides, and the story would be just fine. So two out of the three words don't really work in this title. Better alternatives could be Numenera, the changing god, the last cast off, the sorrow of Numenera. But Torment and the Tides have almost nothing to do with this game and should not be part of the title.